Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Yeah, we have Brute Funer Heaven right here. <laughs> uh, I thought what I would do is compare four different sets of Brute Funer colored pencils. So, first up, we have the Brute Funer, the 120 set of the square pencils. We have two sets of the 180 round Brute Funers, but they look entirely different, so I was curious to see any difference. And then, and I haven't seen really any reviews on these, the 180 Brute Funer watercolor pencils. So, we have how many hundreds of pencils here? I was not going to, <laughs> don't worry, swatch all of these on camera. We'd be here for hours and hours. <laughs> um, and I left all of the cases on just so you could see the difference how you know what what these guys look like some of these you can get on or probably all of them you can get on aliexpress i got all of these on amazon so i will link them down below in the description however the squares are out of stock constantly so they're kind of hard to get a hold of uh your best bet might be aliexpress don't know um so i'm gonna put these up here for now we're going to take a look at the swatches that i did now the only one that i did in final format because i know i'm keeping them <laughs> is the 120 square let me zoom you in and oh my gosh these pencils are fabulous absolutely fabulous the color lay down is just uh, amazing for a budget friendly pencil and look at all the yellows we have some beautiful oranges skin tones not a ton but we do have some beautiful reds our pinks into some beautiful shades of purple lots of blues especially when you consider this is a 120 set lots of pretty greens all different kinds of undertones in here and then into our earth tones and our grays um, now when i do my color charts i'm doing them very differently than how i originally did i am grouping them by the undertone that is within that pencil because if you want to make a nice color blend you kind of want the same undertone so they're not standardly like i used to do just light to dark um, so like these two have the same undertone these are a little bit greener so I group them together and then like these you know same with the pinks I tried anyhow as best I could to keep them with the same you know undertones like these have more of a pinker undertone whereas these had more of the bluer undertone and then same with the blues you know kind of keeping the aquas together so that's what i came up with anyhow so that is the square brute funers and that's what let me zoom you back out a little close here uh that is what is in this case so it comes with this cardboard sleeve let me get it back off so it comes with the cardboard sleeve comes in the metal tin just a plain black tin it just contains some um, in several different languages um, it says brute funer blendable pencils are the perfect coloring solution rich vibrant pigments and x expertly <laughs> ex dash 
pertly. <laughs> Balanced shades provide superior blending. Whether you're a beginner, a hobbyist, or a professional artist, these premium pencils are ideal for all your creative work, from quick sketches to intricate details. So let's take a look. And I'm sure these these are really making the rounds on YouTube. <laughs> so you probably have seen these. And that's why I thought mm, I'm going to swatch them out ahead of time. We'll just kind of briefly look at them. So you do get this uh, color chart that you can color in. Of course, I always make my own. You know that. <laughs> You do get a sponge on the top, which is always nice. Helps to hold them in place in the case. However, if you do order these, it is probably going to look like you're missing one or two. And it's only because of the square shape they shift within the trays. And if you shift them back you're going to see you have all of the pencils but initially and i know others that have shown these on their channel said the exact same thing you originally think you're missing one or two pencils and you're not um, but let's just take one of the pencils here and as you can see they are square and actually the square shape is actually very comfortable in the hand to color with. I wasn't sure if I was going to like the square shape versus the round, but it actually does feel real comfortable in the hand. They do not have an end cap, which is good. And I don't know, I like the look of having the end finished off. But on the other hand, you can see whether the core is centered or not. And from every pencil that I have looked at, every single core looks perfectly centered. And when I have sharpened these, they all sharpened beautifully. Now, the sharpener, and I didn't bring it in here. Darn, it's in the living room yet. Um, I bought the Afmat sharpener. I wanted an electric one. Well, this one's battery, not well, battery operated, but the other thing I like about it is you can plug it in and recharge it so you're not having to go through batteries. So I'll link that sharpener down below in the description also. And the reason why I like it is it will sharpen not only your standard size colored pencils, it will also sharpen these larger and these square shaped pencils beautifully also. I redid my Prismacolor color sheet, so I had to resharpen um, a ton of my Prismacolors. I did not have one of my Prismacolors break in that sharpener. So if you're wondering if it works okay with Prismacolors, with them being so soft, it works wonderfully. Um, so on the barrel, we have just Brute Fooner on the side. Then on the opposite side, we do have a color number and we have a color name, but it is in Chinese. Now, <laughs> uh, Pamela's Passion for Pencils has a Facebook group and she had a member of the group that knows Chinese. And so what she did um, is she translated all of these names into English. And there is a document out in files on Pamela's uh, Facebook group that gives all the names to all of these colored pencils. And the names are so cute um, and very appropriate. Like this color is hibiscus tree. I had hibiscus that wore this exact color. Uh, pink Pearl, Rainbow Feather Dress, Watermelon Juice, uh, Moscow Red Square, Bullfighter's Red Cape, Red Spider Lily, Crimson Lips. I mean, it just, yeah, it, it just has some adorable names. This one's, I mean, there's some that are a little bit different. The Silent Forbidden City, <laughs> Sweet Love, Morning Glory, Purple Cabbage Salad, which again, kind of appropriate. 
purple haze, orchid blossoming blue lotus, Medusa's eyes, the little mermaid, Siamese cat eyes, a midsummer's night's dream, the blue Danube, I mean, bubble eyed goldfish. <laughs> So, yeah, really cute, cute names. Mint ice cream. Picnic on the hill. Mossy stepping stone. I mean, isn't that appropriate? Fish belly white. <laughs> Salted caramel. Antique pipe. So, yeah, just really cute, cute names. So, if you have these and you're wondering... Okay, what the heck is that name? Because I can't read Chinese. Go over and join Pamela's Passion for Pencils uh, Facebook group. And again, in files, there is a document that you can um, print out that has all of the actual color names in English. So, very nice. Thank you so much to Pamela um, and her Facebook group for providing that. So here we have these in order of what my color chart is. So we have the yellows, some skin tones into the reds and the pinks. Second tray has the rest of the purples into all of the blues, starting with the greens and the aquas. And finally, the third tray. And these trays are nice. They have the, the little pullout elastics. Uh, so much nicer to get out of the tray than those that you got to try to pick up, right? I mean, yeah, they're still your typical flimsy plastic trays. And the only reason these are still in this tin and not in a pencil case is for this video. <laughs> immediately after, well, okay, not immediately, but um, these pencils will be going in pencil cases. <laughs> so then we have the rest of our greens into our earth tones and then our grays to metallic. So we have a silver and a gold. So those are the square pencils. I'm going to be going through these relatively quickly just because we have four sets to go through. And again, that is why I am not swatching them all on this video. <laughs> Okay, so let me zoom back out. I'll put these away, and I'm not going to put them back in this here. We'll just put them off to the side. So I'm going to save the watercolor ones for last. Um, now we have the two sets of 180 round pencils. And again, they look very different, both on the outside and the pencils themselves, which you'll see in a moment. We have this set that comes in this tin, and again, has this cardboard, I was going to say insert, <laughs> this cardboard around the outside. Again, the tin is just plain black. Reverse of here pretty much says the exact same thing um, as what is on the 120 squares. So let's look at these. Yeah, I hate these tins. Yeah. This particular tin, the lid comes completely off, which I do like. <laughs> we do have another color chart that you can color in. Now, this particular set is black barreled. We do have the color on the end, and it is uh, end capped. It is completely finished off. And we have Brute Fooner and then Brute Fooner color pencils here. And on the back side, we have the color number and the color name. And this time they're in English. <laughs> very, very easy to read because it's nice and big. The print is nice and big. And the pencil barrel itself is matte black. 
Now the lettering is still in silver, so depending on your lighting, it may be a little hard to read. But for the most part, they're, yeah, they're nice and easy to read. Let's take a look at the colors. Now I distinguish these two sets of pencils by saying 180 round in the tin. And then we have the 180 round, and this is in a plastic box, per se. So, when you look at these colors, again, you know, of course, we're going to have more yellows and, and pinks and whatnot than the squares, because we have 60 more pencils in this set. Um, but yes, we do have some extra skin tones in here. Some nice oranges into orange reds. A lot of nice reds. Now, like I said, the rest of these three color charts are not in final format. I'm sure I will be rearranging colors and whatnot, but this is kind of what I quickly came up with. We have beautiful different shades of pink and into the purples. Look at all these purples. I mean, just tons of purples. Unreal. <laughs> There's almost as many purples as there are blues, which is totally unusual, but we still have a lot of blues. Of course, in a 180 set, you're going to have a number of them that are very similar, like deep blue and royal blue, very, very close. Navy blue and denim blue, again, very close. Not exactly alike, but very close. All these gorgeous greens, many of them being similar to the squares more greens and then we get into the earth tones and then the grays this set has a lot of metallics what are there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve metallics and they are very nice metallics they color down very smoothly and I don't know if I can get it in the camera or not but they are very shimmery yeah I don't have my overhead lights on I'm right next to the window and it's nice and sunny out so but yeah they are very nice and shimmery so the metallics are very nice in this set so this is the round 180 set in the tin. Now I have heard from others that these are very similar to some other round pencils, um, budget friendly pencils that are out on the market. Um, I don't know that to be a fact, but chances are that could very well be true. Um, but for, again, budget friendly for a 180 set, these pencils are actually quite nice. I don't like them as well as the squares, however. They they don't quite lay down the color like the squares did, but they're still very, very nice. Um, so that is the 180 set in the tin. Now the 180 set in the plastic case looks like this and again we have this cardboard sleeve and this one does not come in a tin it comes in this plastic case it has this carrying handle so it doesn't right off the bat doesn't look quite as nice as the tin right when you get them in these plastic cases at least not to me um, so you open them up and again we have a Oh, excuse me. Um, we have a color chart that you can color in. Doesn't have a lot of room for a color number. Um, but as you can see, these look quite different than the other set. So let's take a look at these. There is no end cap 
which again, some people prefer. And again, from what I could see in these pencils, they all looked very centered. I did not have a problem with sharpening these. And again, I've sharpened all these pencils with my F mat. And uh, yeah, it didn't blow up at me <laughs> after all of these pencils plus four color charts that I've been working on. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of pencil sharpening. It states Brute Fooner here. We have a double gray band. We have the color number and we have the color name. These, however, do have a shiny uh, color that corresponds with the lead. And then the name and number is in gold metallic. So again, quite a different look than the round Brute Fooners in the tin. Now, I, I don't know. Me personally, these were extremely, extremely similar. But I think overall, I actually liked the ones in the tin. Maybe just a smidgen better. I don't know. Um, it doesn't seem like they're the exact same pencil, but I wanted to compare what colors were in these sets. And it was kind of interesting. Where did I put that sheet? Uh, it's like I have nothing on my desk here besides four sets of pencils. Okay, so when we compare these two sets of round pencils, there are only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different colors between the two. So almost the entire 180 set is identical. Um, we do have these colors that are not in here, but is in the tin. We have these colors then that make up for those colors. So these are in the plastic set, not in the tin. So we do have a little bit of a different red. We have a couple of reds um, that are in this plastic set, not in there. We have an additional green in here. Couple of yellows that are not in here. So yeah, there, there are a few differences, but yeah, not many. Um, and a couple of the pencils um, were the same, but they either had a different number or a different name. For instance, in the round uh, the tin, it was 038 metallic green, and in here it was 038 metallic teal, but it was the same pencil. Um, also, um, in the tin, it was 174 apricot yellow. In here, it was 174 light pink. Um, in the tin, it was 031 ginger yellow, and in here it was 094 ginger yellow. So yeah, just a few, few differences as I went through the entire color charts that I swatched out. This is what I came up with as far as the differences between the two 180 sets. And considering there's 180 pencils, yeah, this isn't much, right? They're, they're pretty, pretty similar. So those are the 180 rounds in the plastic trays, the plastic container, not trays. Um, and as you can see, we have all these, you know, and they're of course very flimsy, clear plastic trays. Um, that contains all of these beautiful colors. And they still are a very nice pencil um, for their price. Yeah, they, they lay down beautifully. Um, I just don't think they're as nice as the squares. It's something about the, the color lay down of the squares is just 
I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's just so vibrant and so pigmented. Um, and they blend and layer. And yeah, they're just really, really nice. And these do too, as, as well as the set in the 180s. They do. Um, and do I think they're worth the money? Yeah, I do. Um, but out of these three sets, the squares are definitely my favorite. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not going to be keeping both of these rounds. Um, I will be keeping one of them. And uh, the other side is probably going to go to one of my daughters. <laughs> um, I am thinking it is going to be the black barreled ones. And I will forward these on to her. But I haven't totally made up my mind yet. Because these are nice also. They're very, very similar. Okay, the last set that I would like to go over, and again, I know I'm going over this really quickly, um, but yeah, I know there have been lots of reviews on these pencils on other channels, and again, <laughs> because I'm going over four different sets, I don't want to make this video hours long. So this is the sleeve on the 180 Brute Funer watercolor pencils. This also comes in a plastic case. And on the reverse, pretty much the exact same thing um, as the other uh, cardboard sleeves state. So let's take a look at these pencils. So when you first see these, they look identical <laughs> to the previous set I just showed you, the 180 rounds. The color chart is quite a bit bigger. It is kind of like a, a double page spread. They do give you a little bit more room to write in a color number if you decide to use this. And this is what the watercolor pencils look like. Let's just grab one out and I will zoom you in. Okay, so these also do not have an end cap, but again, when I looked at these, they all looked very centered. So I was, yeah, I was amazed at you know, especially with the problems we have with Prismacolor, who would that cost a lot, lot more than these? And the problem with having the cores off center does not seem to be a problem with the brute funers at all. And they sharpen wonderfully. So we have the color number. We have brute funer. And here it states Brute Funer watercolor pencils. You always know a watercolor pencil because there's typically a water or a paintbrush on them. There are, however, no color names on the watercolor pencils. So there is just a color number. So at least we have that, right? So this is the one set that does not have color names on them. Um, it is, again, a shiny barrel that um, is indicative of the color inside. And then the gold metallic writing. Okay, so again, comes in these clear plastic trays. Beautiful colors. We do get a uh, metallic silver and gold. But, oh, lots of pretty, pretty colors. You do get a number of skin tones, and I'll show you the swatch. These pencils really surprised me. <laughs> I do have to say, I mean, gorgeous greens. Let me zoom you out. You're, only, you're not seeing the whole tray, are you? Lots of blues, lots of greens. Look at all them greens. And then we get into the earth tones. Lots of earth tones. For a set this large, not the most grays. Um, which is okay with me, but I know many colorists use a lot of grays. 
and so they really like that big variety of grays so yeah with with us 180 set a set being this large yeah not not a ton of grays so let's look at the swatch chart all right, we start out with these real pale yellows and we get into these beautiful yellow oranges. We do have some skin tones. We have a neon, oranges. We get into a red orange and then all these reds and I did make a couple boo-boos on this chart as I was swatching them. <laughs> get a dark red. Then we do get some pale pinks, couple more skin tones here. Like I said, I would be, I will be rearranging these. Um, lots of pinks into the purples quite a few purples again as you can see these beautiful blues going into these greens aren't them pretty and then we get into our gold greens deeper greens olive greens and then our blue greens that I put down here at the end then we get into the earth tones and there's quite a few of those a lot on the reddish side and then we get into the darker earth tones and then there are the grays and our two metallics at the end all right what surprised me <laughs> about these pencils is how blendable is not the word how um they dissolved um they dissolved wonderfully um and you know blended out as you can see on here now however i do have to say that with a caveat <laughs> when i work with watercolor pencils I always blend out with my Tombow blender. I just find I'm much more comfortable working with a felt tip than I am with a water brush um, using the, you know, bristles. Um, I just have a harder time with this. And I, I know with practice, it would get easier. And, you know, just me and paint brushes in general. <laughs> I, they splay out on me and I go out of the lines and I just feel like I have more control with this. Um, so for instance, let's go on the back of the page here. If I swatch out one of these reds, okay, so I'm going to put a couple layers down. Whoops, broke the lead. And I use my, let me zoom you in a little. I use my Tombow uh, blender. I mean, they blend out beautifully. They do take, you know, a little bit of work. They're, they're not going to be your super high quality like your Elbert Dur, your Inktense, Karen Dosh, uh, you know, things like that. But I think they blend out beautifully now I wanted to let me show you what it does with a water brush however I think they blended out again that's not the right term um, they dissolved nicely because of the fact that I was able to use that felt tip yeah did you just see what I did it's like, uh, no, Lisa, that's not how that goes. Let's try the right pen. Um, because the water brush bristles don't go down as heavy as that Tombow blender does. I found when I tried these, they, they still blended out quite nice. But I, at times, depending on the color, now this one's doing okay there's a lot of water on here and that's why you're seeing the back of the paper coming through um this color actually dissolved quite nicely um let's try maybe a one of these and i do have some watercolor paper here so we're going to test that out too 
So I'm going to put down this pinkish purple color. All right. So we're going to try, I almost did it again, with the Tombow blender. And again, it takes a while to get them going. But it does dissolve it to the point where you don't see much of a line. I don't have a napkin in here or a piece of paper towel. But even with the water brush, you can see, I mean, they do dissolve really nicely. Um, I do want to try this on, and I haven't tried this on my own yet. I'm really curious to see what they do on watercolor paper. So I am going to, let me, let me get some of this out of the way. We're going to try, we're going to try a few colors. Um, I have this Strathmore watercolor pad. Let me zoom you back out. This is a big pad that I uh, typically cut down. I had gotten these at um, Hobby Lobby. It was three for one. I <laughs> didn't even know that. Um, and these are, of course, too thick to go through a printer. So we're, I just like to use them for testing purposes. And this is, I haven't tested on this sheet yet. So let's get out a darker color. So this is a real dark red. Now this is cold press, as you can see. Very textured. Okay. So then we'll do this one. Let's try the Tombow Blender. This Tombow, I think I have to refill because it's not the wettest anymore. But it does blend out beautifully. Zoom you back in, huh? And let's try the water brush. See, they, they do. They just dissolve wonderfully. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I was really surprised at how these worked. I'm, I mean, they're very nice watercolor pencils. Let's try a purple. Now, yeah, they're going to sound super rough <laughs> on this cold press paper. I'm going to try to get a little bit more pigment down. So we'll go a couple layers here. And let's try that. I should really, I wonder if I got a piece of... I have a Kleenex in here I'm going to use to wipe off my blenders. Yeah, this definitely is getting dry. Not sure if I have any that... Let me try this one and see. No, I think I need to refill my Tombow. Um, let's try the water brush after I get the red off. <laughs> See, they, they do blend out. They leave a little bit behind. Let's see if I can work that out. But overall, like I said, when I made the color chart, I did it all with my Tombow. So I did want to point out that fact that it could blend differently between a water brush and a felt tip, right? Um, let's try... Where did I get this out of? Oh, over here. Um, should we try a blue? Sorry for my arm being in the way. <laughs> Let's try a blue. Oh, isn't that pretty? 
So this is a set I believe I'm going to be keeping two. I want to start using my watercolor pencils more. I do have the Artezas and um, the ink tents. I did just do a picture not too long ago with the ink tents. Yeah, definitely need to refill my Tombos. But it does blend out so nice even with a drier one. <laughs> Let's try the water brush. So they do dissolve really nice. We'll try one more color. Let's get a green. Maybe we'll make like a gradation. Let's, uh, we'll only do two colors. Well, no, maybe we'll do three. Just to test it out. So we're going to go dark. It's not real dark, but. Then a little bit lighter. And yeah, I'm just doing this very quickly <laughs> and into a very yellow green. And let's just see what it does. Now, of course, as usual, you always want to start with your lightest color first, because otherwise you're going to drag your dark color into your light. So we'll, we'll work backwards. I actually should have started with the light color on the left, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think I think my Tombow has about had it. Not working too well there at all. <laughs> Put on the refill pile. But let's see what the water brush is going to do. Mmm, pretty. It does make a nice gradient. Yeah, I like I said, I, I think for a budget-friendly set of watercolor pencils, they are not that bad. With a watercolor brush, like I said, it does leave yeah, a little bit behind. I think depending on how much pigment you lay down. Because here I didn't lay down quite as much. You, you can't see the edging. Here I laid more down. And yeah, here you can see it. So again, I did this entire color chart with the Tombow. And it, it blended it out or it dissolved it beautifully. So yeah, I think they're quite nice. Now, one other thing that I wanted to test, um, so I did this off camera. I wanted to see how the pencils were going to blend on Amazon paper. Um, a lot of our books are Amazon paper printed, right? So I wanted to test something where I could use the same approximate colors um, in a similar pattern. So I, I decided to get Jade Summers in Magical Mandalas. I divided it into four. So we have the square Brute Fooners here. We have the round in that black tin. So that has the black barrel with the silver on, silver lettering. Here is the round 180 set in the plastic container. So that has the gold foiling or gold lettering. And then here is the watercolor set. So the square, like I said, I, they all did really well. Um, the square just seemed, again, to lay down the color more smoothly. They blended together really nicely. I wanted to pick um, a few different 
colors to blend together. So I picked a red, orange, and yellow. I picked a purple and a pink. I picked like three shades of blue and then um, a few shades of green. So I tested all those color combinations in all four sets. And yeah, the squares, uh, yeah, they, they kind of won. Um, I do like the rounds in the tin. But you can see, and I did pick out the same colors between the tin and the plastic, the rounds. And you can see the colors are quite different. So, yeah, I'm almost sure I picked out the same colors. I don't know why I wouldn't have. And then here are the watercolor pencils. So again, even on Amazon paper, these pencils, all four sets, actually worked rather nicely. Um, as you can see, the watercolor pencils blended out really nice. Here's the red, orange, and the yellow. The purple into the pink are blues, and then the shades of green. So again, for budget-friendly pencils, I I am, yeah, I'm, I'm blown away. I think all four sets are nice. Um, like I said, my top pick are the square pencils. Um, but then there's only <laughs> 120 pencils versus 180 in the other three. I'm definitely keeping these two. And I think I'm going to be keeping the round in the tin. So I'll be asking my daughter if she wants this set. I, like I said, these two feel very, very similar. The colors are almost identical. Um, very, very similar feel. I just, I don't know. The, the ones in the tin just felt a little bit... I don't want to say softer. They just seem to lay down the color maybe a little bit better, but yeah, nothing like the squares. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I thought it would be interesting to do a real comparison in a coloring book with all four sets um, to give you a good comparison of the four. So again, we have the 180 let me zoom you all the way out. The 180 watercolor pencils. We have the 180 round in the plastic container. Where did I put the other chart? Where did I put it? Where did I put it? <laughs> is it hiding? Well, anyhow, we have the, oh, here it is. The 180 round in the tin. And then finally, the 120 square. So I, I hope you found this uh, video kind of interesting so we could do a comparison of the four different sets. Like I said, I don't know if I have seen anybody do a video on the watercolor set. Um, so I definitely wanted to include that in here. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and seeing this comparison of all these brute fooners. <laughs> if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. I really would appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day and as always, happy coloring. Bye guys.